Okay, in this walkthrough I'm going to show you how you can wire up a pendant light fitting. That's one that you'd have hanging from the ceiling to a single switch so you're able to control it from the wall. All right, now what we'll do is we'll um, take it nice and slow. I'll explain as I'm going along and point out some of the key th safety features and things like that. Um, I'm just going to assume now that you've gone over the theory to do with safe isolation procedure. So if you're working in a house now and you're going to try and fit a pendant light fitting, you'd ensure that the power was off using the safe isolation procedure. Now, just look for a second, right? This is the first of the tasks that you're going to use the project board for. Here's your project board. It's got three holes drilled in it. We use it for plumbing and electrical. The two holes you've got here for your switches and the hole in the centre, which is where uh, your light fitting is going to be screwed over. I've done that already. Look, I've fixed my light fitting in there nice and, nice and securely. If that was going into a ceiling, look, I'd probably have to use plasterboard fittings, but I've just screwed it straight into the plywood. Don't use a drill driver to screw it in. You will crack the plastic in the pendant light fitting. So you might want to drill a pilot hole or use a bradle to make a, a, a hole ready for the screw to go in and then just tighten it up by hand. Right, now we're going to use one and a half millimeter square lighting flex. Now it's the nicest flex to use in terms of moving it around. It's quite thin, easy to move, but also it's perfect for lighting because it can handle the current for lighting. Um, don't try and put more current through than you need to because it's not a, not rated thick enough to do high power applications. Things like cookers and showers need a much thicker cable, but it's fine for lighting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip the insulation back. So if you just saw what I did, I just cut down the first centimetre or so of the cable enough to be able to pull the cable apart. And that's a really effective way of you stripping back the grey insulation. You might see some people using a knife to cut along the grey insulation. I'm always worried that you're going to cut into the insulation on these cables and risk a possible short circuit. And also if you cut around the cable you stand the same chance of that happening, so don't do either. Right now, cut the grey bit off, we don't need that there. And discard that. So you've got now your conducting lines exposed. So what you've got, you've got a an earth line, that's your continuity for earth, important. That's your neutral, and this is your live. Your brown is your live, your blue is your neutral. Now, before we put that through the hole, let's uh, cut and strip so we can see what we're doing. So, stripping the wire. Look, I'm quite fortunate here because I've got my wire strippers with me. There's lots of different kinds of wire strippers you can get. These are probably, for me, the nicest ones to use. I'm going to strip about a centimetre and a half of cable, and I'm going to strip a, strip a centimetre and a half off the neutral as well. So I've got those two with bare wire on the ends of them. Now I'm going to get some insulated long nose pliers like these and I'm going to grab hold of the end of that wire and I'm going to bend it over into a U shape and I'm going to pinch that U shape in nice and tightly to make a nice flat end to the wire, nice flat end. Now what that flat end means is I've got a good space to clamp down the screw in the connecting block right onto so that you want to get into the technique of doing that, that's a good technique for wiring. OK, don't worry about the neutral just yet. We'll leave him. We don't need to clamp his end over just yet. Right, now, next thing. I'm going to get my cable and I'm going to feed it through the floor space or through the attic space if I'm up in the uh, first floor. And I'm going to bring it through the attic space and I'm going to dangle it down from the ceiling with enough uh, left over so that I don't have to worry about stretching the cable. Now, I've got a blue neutral brown live and I've got my earth cable that's by there. Right, my blue one is the one I'm going to do first. So with my insulated screwdriver, I'm going to loosen off the blue, the screw next to the blue wire on the light fitting. So this is my neutral connections down here. Bring that cable in, put it into the junction that's next to the blue one, and wire your blues so they are in the same block of three. So my neutral is connected to my neutral. Now I've pushed that right up to the junction block so the insulation is actually going straight against the block. There is no bare wire showing, that's a good connection. Right, now, live. If I take my live wire and I put it straight to the same block as where the brown is going to the light, as soon as we flick the switch back on for the mains, this light bulb will light up and the switch won't be doing anything at all. So I don't want to put it in that one, I want to put it into the loop, which is the uh, row of three sockets on its own, the island in the middle. So you're going to 
pop it underneath any of those three separate ones there and you're going to screw it down nice and tight under that one sometimes you have to just loosen them up a little bit more until that one just slides in place underneath it make sure it goes in nice and tight so electrical work can be a bit fiddly sometimes you just have to have a little bit of patience with it just make sure that goes in and tighten it up so that we've got a good connection right with no looseness there at all you can buy expensive ones of these that have got a click that tells you when you've tightened the wire up enough but i haven't got one of those right so there's my main power going in my blue goes to my neutral and my live goes to the loop one of the three in the middle so now here's my earth well i might as well deal with my earth whilst we're here now so with my earth wire i've got this tube which is called earth slew in right and what i'm going to do i'm going to slide some of it over the top of the earth wire so it's right down next to where that wire comes out of the gray insulation i'm going to make a mark where i know how long it is and i'm going to cut that bit to that length so i've just got a bit of tube that's going to fit over that bare earth wire there it is now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bend that earth wire over to make my nice connection like this and my earth wire is going to go into the earth block on the light fitting which is that little block that you can see by here and we're going to screw that in place there so you've got three connections to make to start off with once you've done that you have successfully wired the power to a pendant light fitting now the next thing you're going to be doing is wiring up your switch okay the switch then let's take the back off that for a second first thing i would do is i'd be screwing the back plate of the switch to the wall now if that's going to a wall you'd have to use raw plugs and a masonry drill and screw that in properly but obviously this is plywood so again you can screw it in with some self-tapping screws now here is your switch the back of your switch is interesting it's got some things you need to take note of written on the back of the switch you will see if you look closely com that's on the single connection that's the common and then you've got l1 and l2 now L1 and L2 are the two poles of the switch, right? So when the switch goes, it goes in between two poles like this. One of them is L1 and the other one is L2. Now it depends whether you want the switch to be off in this position when it's up, which is normal, or whether you want the switch to be off when it's in this position, which is not normal. Um, so we can find that out by testing it uh, where we go, right? So now, next thing, we are gonna get some more cable that's gonna become our lighting um switch now the lighting switch cable i'm going to use some of this power cable that i had snip a bit more of that off and i'm going to wire up the switch first right i'm going to use the other end that i've already stripped here to do my switch a bit more quickly and so here i do uh, is i go from the um right now okay i've missed one little bit out to tell you right um with your switch cable you're going to be joining the these two bits together you're going to be joining the live to the live feed to the lamp right with this switch so when you close the switch it joins these two pieces of wire together and closes the circuit but you're using some blue wire by here now that blue wire is actually a live wire so before you do anything else a good thing to do is to get some brown slew in right and this is just to mark it so don't worry too much about the length of that we're not trying to cover any bare wires you're going to get some brown slew in and you're going to feed that over the top of your live wire in your switch so i've got two brown wires there they're my switching lines okay with that right now my switching lines right what they're going to do is they're going to go from the com to either l1 or l2 so loosen that one off and screw doesn't matter if it's the blue or the brown okay because they're both live wires in the switch you're going to put that underneath the first one and so because we did such a good job of pinching that down we need to make it a little bit narrower so i'm just going to shrink it down a little bit more to make sure it'll go underneath that connector get that to go right under the connection block and tighten it up 
So my one side of the switch is in luck, and my other side of the switch is going to go into either L1 or L2. Now we might discover that the switch turns on the wrong way round. If it does, we can switch those over, it's not a problem. So my that one goes in there. And that's my switch line uh, connected to the switch. So I've got one in the com, one in either L1 or L2. And look, I've got an earth wire there. So what I'm going to do with my earth wire, I'm going to measure up a bit more of that earth sleeving. And I'm going to cut it. I'm going to feed that over the top of the earth cable. And I'm going to bend the end of that over and pinch it down nice and tight. OK, so you might be looking now for somewhere on the switch where your earth connection goes in. You won't find it on this part. Look, it's actually on the switch body there. So this earth wire is going to be screwed into the connection which is inside your switch body by there. Okay, that's where it's going to go. So with that side of the switch done, the next thing is to wire the switch up to the pendant light. Right, so the pendant light, look, your switch line comes up through the hole at the back again. So you've got two, two wires coming through now from the back. You're going to cut and strip this wire. Same technique, look, cut down the wire, peel them apart, leave yourself enough cable so that you can do it without stretching the wires, but not too much. You'll get used to the right amount as you're doing it. Cut that grey off so it's out of the way. And you've now got your brown and your uh, blue wires. Remember, both of these wires are live wires. So we're going to get some of that brown slew in, if I can find where I put it. Some more of that brown slew in, stick it over the blue wire to tell us that that's a live wire. And then we're going to wire these two into the pendant light fitting. Right, so they go into the pendant light fitting from the live, this one here. Okay, I haven't bent the end of that over, look, just for freeze now, I'm going to cut it a bit shorter. You bend that over into that U set shape, remember, okay? And then I'm going to pop that under there, screw it in place. You have to make sure that it's gone well under there, okay? And you haven't got any bare metal showing at the back of the junction block. Tighten that up, make sure it's tight enough. Get your brown now, that's the blue wire with the brown slewing on it and put it into the same place as the live from the power supply. So you should have three connections on that. And your three connections in a row, it doesn't matter which one you go into, that's just gonna take the power from the switching loop to your lamp. I'm hoping that's gone on there. I'm not sure if it has. Okay. So, I've taken that over. Now, my last job that I've got to do before I do anything else is to get my earth slew in and put a bit of earth slew in over the top of that cable from my switch and fix that into the same place. Oops, Daisy. Put that into the same place as the earth from the power supply. Earth to earth always. So, let's just recap really quickly. You put your power line in first, your power line, the blue from the power line goes to the neutral, so those are joined together. So in that first row, all I have is two neutral lines, the power line and the feed that goes to the light. The brown from your power line goes into the loop, that's the row of three in the middle. Then you wire your switch up. From your switch, you've got two cables, one's brown, one's blue, but remember they're both live wires. So we use slewing to make sure that the brown and the blue are both signified uh, as live wires and they get wired from the loop to the live. OK, and then make sure that your earth continuity is good by wiring all your earth wires up together. OK, now um, I would say it looks straightforward, but it's not. It's a pretty complex bit of wiring, really. And as your first task, it's going to take a little bit of practice. You've got a lot of new things to learn. You've got to make sure you know how to strip the wires properly, form the end over, cramp, crimp them, uh, you know, have the 
dexterity, you know, the manual skills to use the screwdriver properly to do those things. So stick at it, you know, it's going to be frustrating. It's going to be awkward at times. You know, I've cut my finger today doing something. You might end up stabbing yourself in a hand with a piece of wire, which is very painful, but it does happen. OK, so have a go. Take photos as you go along for your folder, remember. And when you get that first stage done, uh, if you ask your teacher to check it over, you might be able to put a bulb in this. I've got a 12 volt bulb and I've got a 12 volt power supply and we can see whether that's going to light up. We don't put it anywhere near the mains. We're not allowed to do that. But you can uh, test it with a 12 volt supply. Yeah, to do any of this work properly, you have to be what's called a Part P qualified electrician. And I am not a Part P qualified electrician. I'm showing you the basics here. If you like electrical installation, you want to go further to do it. There's courses in the college you can do it and be taught by the professionals. All right. But follow those steps, follow the instructions in your booklet and have a go. Well done.